Hi and welcome to this Bellacore painting tutorial. An absolutely amazing model that really deserves a good bit of attention. And this tutorial is going to take you through what is essentially box art. I started off by building the unit entirely, but left the base and the main figure separate. They're primed with Chaos Black. I've also left all the chains from his wings off because that's going to make it quite difficult to do the detailing on the wings with these on. And I've primed them with Lead Belcher, which is a good start for silver chains. And because I'm building this in a 40k style, I've primed the Marine that's going to go on the base as well. Now I'm doing this in my custom chapter colours, which starts off with a red base. But essentially, you just need to paint this Marine up in whatever scheme you want to do. Um, and then he'll fit onto the base. So I'm not really going to cover the marine painting. So for the base, it's going to be a lava theme, and you'll be able to see all the lava within all these creases. So we'll go through that shortly. But to start off with, we're going to dry brush all his skin and the wings with Skaven Blight Dinge. And essentially, that'll take a, a little bit of work, a lot of paint, to make sure I get a good coverage. And it'll be all his skin, his face, hands, legs, inside and outside of the wings. And you'll see that without the chains on, it's much easier to dry brush down here. I'm going to go across the rivets in the wings to make sure I catch the edges. So not um, side to side. And it's the same on the back. You can see there's lots of nice detail on these wings and the dry brush will catch that. So we'll come back once that's given blight, dinge is done. A couple of goes over the dry brush has brought up all the detail on the wings and the body. And you can see there. Um, it's quite subtle, but you can definitely see that it's cut all the ridges. I'm going to do a second dry brush with a slightly lighter grey, it's Storm Vermin Fur. And I'm going to avoid the bony bits in between, so mainly on the inner sort of skinny fleshy bits on here and on the back as well. So I'm going to do all those bits again, just lightly with the dry brush. I will also go over the skin and torso as well. Then still with Storm Vermin Fur, I'm going to base colour the spikes on the end of his talons here. Do all those bits and, um, and his feet as well. And then to highlight those and also highlight his horns, I'm going to use Zandri Dust Dry Brush. And I'm just going to dry brush over these, these uh, newly painted talons and on his horns. I'm also going to dry brush Zandra just on any of the other spikes and horns that are coming on his body, on his arms and stuff like that that are breaking through. Just being careful not to catch any other areas of his body. And because I want this to look dark, I'm only going to dry brush the bit nearest his head, not the tips of these horns. I'm going to leave them a bit darker. Using Storm Vermin Fur, I've dry brushed all the membranes and the wings in the front of the back. I've then used it to base coat all the talons on the edges of the wings. I've also used it on all the horns and spikes, including the toes, the edge of the tail, fingertips. Then used Zandri Dust over those same areas, over the talons, over his toes, all the different spikes on his arms, and then on his skull as well. But I've kept the, the edges of his horns here dark. And what you get is this effect. Then what I did was I used Zandri Dust as a edge highlight, and I've edge highlighted the all of these, just run it along the pointed edges there. It's quite easy to, to achieve that across all of these ones. On his shoulder, you can see I've just done a bit of an edge highlight there. And then caught the tops of all of these bits. You can see that the it's quite bright now on this head. So what we'll do is we'll use some uh, watered down and bad and black just to go into the recesses of all these areas here to darken it up a bit because the dry brush will tend to lighten areas. I'm going to darken them back and I'll go over and just make sure that's back to what it should be. So things like around the, the around the legs and the, the shadows on the knees. After the darkening, I'll then use some Volupus pink contrast paints. And I'm going to mix this with the contrast medium at two to one. So that's one part Volupus pink. And I'm going to use that then to paint the special symbol on his chest. Now I'm just going to run some of that contrast medium into there and it's just going to pink up his chest a bit. I'll then also run it around the edges of his talons on his wings here, uh, where it goes into the skin and bone, just around the edges. And then I'll come back when that's done and I'll point out all the different areas that that's been done on. So firstly for the Abaddon Black, I've tidied up the horns and between each of these different horn sections, I've, I've darkened it up. Uh, made it look a bit neater. And on the knees here, I've 
filled in some of the muscles. I've um, gone over the lines on the chest, so along the, the muscle lines underneath his arms, um, on his feet and toes, and basically just followed the, the black along any lines that should have been dark. Because he has a lot of shadows, I want to keep him dark, I don't want him getting too light with the dry brush. Then the uh, Volupus Pink mix with the Contrast Medium. Um, essentially, the main part is the chest here. And it's quite subtle um, into there, I've tried to make sure it doesn't run off from that section. But I've also done some along the tops of the wings here, just on this section here, coming out from the top talons. You can see there, on the front and the back, there's a little, it looks a bit of a, of a pink hue. Then round the base of each of the talons uh, on his feet as well. So taking a close up, you can see there the, the pink around the base of the, the talon and, and at the top of there. The next step is to attach all the chains onto the wings. Now they're already spray primed with lead belcher and I'll probably attach them and then I will put some null oil on to dirty them down. I'll also then use Iron Hand Silver on all the bits that need to be done. So his shoulder pad, his knee pad, arm guard, any of the chains around his wrists and buckles. Um, there's a few that he's on his horns as well as like some, some ring loops. Chain mail as well, make sure they're all silver. And then there's also a few bits which are going to be retributor armor as gold, so I'll do them as well. Particularly, there's some surrounding edge of the shoulder pad is going to be gold. Um, the main body of his sword here is going to be gold, not the hilt, just the, the bit that's just above his, his hand, I'm not sure what it's called. And there's a few other bits as well, so I'll go through them when they're done. So at this point I've reattached all the chains which were primed with lead belcher. I've painted up all the silvers and the golds, and you can see there the silver on the chainmail, on the leg, shoulder, arm, the cuffs. Um, I've got the gold trim, not a lot of gold there. A little bit of gold trim on this little bell thing here. I made sure that it's neat around there for silver. In particular, the bits where the plugs come through the skin and membrane, they're painted silver as well, so you can see that coming through. And now it's time to do some highlighting and washing of this. So first of all, I'm going to null nile all the chains on the wings, and the same for his chainmail here. Slightly different from the armour plates, I'm going to use a Brazilla Keenum grey contrast paint and I'm going to do that across all that, which is going to dirty it all up. And then I'm going to use some Skeleton Horde mixed with contrast medium in a 3 to 1, that's 3 contrast 1 Skeleton Horde, just to wash over these again and that should make them look tarnished and dirty. Then once that's done I can use Stormhose Silver just to pick out some highlights on these bits again and maybe on here, maybe take the side of a brush and just run along some of these areas just to bring some of that, that colour back out. Another step I'm going to do, and that's to base coat all the skulls. So there's a few here, a couple on the wings and stuff like that. I'm going to use Rakar Flesh to base coat those skulls, and then I can use a Skeleton Horde to wash them, Rakar Flesh, and then Screaming Skull to highlight them, just take the right raised bits over the, the brow of the eye and the nose and whatever else. That stage is done and you can see I've got the null oil on the chains with some Stormhost Silver just highlighting and then what I've done there is I've just flicked across the edges of the chain bits and over the key bits there just to try and bring out the highlights. Then the skulls have been based in Rakar Flesh and I've washed them with Skeleton Horde a few highlights uh, with Skeleton Horde and then with Screaming Skull. I've also used a little bit of the Stormhost Silver just to catch the edges of his shoulder pauldron, arm and leg armour. The next task is to paint his loincloth here and what I'll do is I'll base it in a Screamer Pink. I'll then use the Bazilla Keenum Grey to wash it and then I'll pick out some of the folding colours and the highlight the edges with Pink Horror and that'll be the detail here. Then what I'll do is the leather bits, and you can see under his arm there, there's a bit of leather at the top of there. I'm going to base those with more of fine brown, then use Bazilcanium Grey again just to, to dirty them up, and then use more of fine brown again just to highlight. And to bring out some of the leather dirtiness, particular around the top here, I'm going to use some Xander Dust just to dirty up some of the leather. And with that the loincloth and browns are done. 
You can see here the the browns on there. There's a little bit on the edge of the cloth. They're just standard brown, then some basilica in grey, and then some um, Montpang brown again, just to highlight the edges. A little bit of Xandri dust as well. Then with the screen pink, I've used basilica in grey, and it's created a nice, uh, dirty, dingy feel to it. I've then gone back with that same colour just to highlight some of the edges. I use some pink horror for extra highlights. And then just at the top here where it's frayed, I've used the Xandri dust again. The next major part of the model is the sword. And it's got a very particular design to it with this you know, greeny, uh, bluey hue and grey flames. And I'll be looking to do the same as box art for this. So first I will use Ink by Darkness just to um, base coat the sword. So that's the main bottom bit, it doesn't matter if it goes onto some of the flames. And also just inside the sky rod there. I'll use some side bright green to do some uh, basing and highlighting along the bottom of the, the blade itself. Then Araman blue, which is actually going up into the flames a bit. So it's about up to that level there, as you can see, up to the top point of the sword. Um, and essentially the Araman blue will be catching the edges of all the flames and the edges of the sword. And then finish with Barahoff Blue, just to highlight again some more of the flames along there. At this point, because I've got the Araman Blue out, I can also do his eyes. After doing that part, I will base coat all the flames with, with Skaven Blight Dinge, and then come back and show you. You've seen the slow build-up of all the colours along the flame of the sword, and it's looking pretty good, I think. Um, and a base in the Skaven Blight Dinge on the rest of the flames at the top. The next bit is to um, do some highlighting just along the edges by running your brush along the edge of them with Storm Vermin Fur. Then using Volupa's Pink again as I did for the chest with some contrast medium, two to one, um, to run some uh, pinky hue across all of that. So paste all that all over the top. And then I'll use an Administratum Grey, or I can always just light up Storm storm vermin fur again just to do some very selective really light grey highlights across it and then to finish off i'll dry brush just the tips of all of these with uh, a bad and black just to make them particularly dark and with those highlights done the blade of shadows is complete and it looks quite cool with the flaming blue into the dark and the model is now done so it's over to painting the base. As a preference piece, you can decide what you want to do about this sort of blank bit on the base here. You can either use some base ready material, you can use some sand with some PVA. I was going to use this uh, Astro Granite Debris just to build up some of the texture on here to make it continue the stone effect. And the step after that is to dry brush the whole thing with Storm Vermin Fur just to give it some depth of highlight, and then I'll go through the next steps after that. With the technical base stuff dried on the edge here, I actually used Basilicanium Grey on it, just to try and match some of the deeper color, and that looks pretty good, actually, in the way it's flowed into the base. Now, I've already dry brushed with Storm Vermin Fur all over, as you can see there, and the next stage is to do a more selective highlight with my Zandri Dust, just picking out some of the bits of the stone, so I'll be quite gentle. And then I'll do a very selective dry brush with Rakar Flesh, which is just the edges of the steps. With those extra dry brushes done, the detailing looks quite cool now. So the next stage is to paint in the lava flow between all the rocks. So I'm gonna start with corn red, watered down so it can get in between the gaps uh, more easily. And um, I'm gonna coat all that all the bits that you can see, and I've even done some through the technical paint at the bottom here. I'm going to coat them with that. Once that's dry, I'm going to use some Blood Angels Red Contrast, just to add a bit of extra colour and depth into some of those areas. And then afterwards, some Evil Sun Scarlet, just at certain areas where it's a bit wider, obviously a bit deeper, hotter, and I'll pick out a few areas of the Evil Sun Scarlet as a highlight. And then again, on those same areas, a little bit of Jacara Orange, just to really pop out the colour. And I'll come back when all that's done. We can see that the lava is now all painted. And to be honest, it does make a really cool effect. Going on with corn red first, and I use the Blood Angel contrast color, and then went in with a little bit of highlights with Evil Sun Scarlet, 
and a little bit of highlight with the Jacaro orange. And you can see there the texture of the colour because of all the different colours that are in there. And it looks quite nice. Now this was very fiddly to paint between the gaps without just coating all the brickwork with paint. So potentially you could do the um, lava work first before dry bushing and then just be extra careful that you don't paint over any of the lava. It, I didn't do it that way and to be honest because I dry brushed it as soon as I'd, once I'd finished painting all the bit there was loads of mistakes and loads of mess up. However just going back over it with the Star Vermin Fur just touching up the edges of the stones and making sure it hasn't ruined the dry brushing effect. It still looks like a cool stone effect and uh, I'm really happy with that. So the next stage now is the metallics and the skulls and like with the main model I'm just going to paint the metal with the iron hand silver and then I'll wash it with null oil and then I'll highlight it with a storm hose silver and for the skulls and there are a few in the actual base itself as well as on the chains I'm going to base them with Rakar flesh then um, use skeleton hard wash and then I will use a little bit more Rakar flesh just to highlight over the nose bridges and the eyes sockets and then screaming skull to finish them off um, and also I've got this wheel here which in the box art is gone. The extra bits on the base are now done you see all the skulls the metal and I've even done a black rim on the base and combining with the complete model you can see that Bellacore is now finished. I hope this was a useful tutorial let me know in the comments drop us a like if you've watched it all the way through consider subscribing for future videos and I'll leave you with a revolving view of the finished model.